Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Zombie Girls Podcast. I'm your co-host, Rachel, and joining me today to talk about dirty movies and theaters are Matilda. Hello. Ariel. Hi. And back, back, back again, it's Sarah. Hello. Hey, we missed you so much last okay. time. How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, doing okay. Yeah, Surviving. Surviving. Hey, listen. There. Every yeah. day, as DJ always says, every day is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes those gifts are <laughs> shitty sacks of coal. Sometimes they're <laughs> a brand new bike. You just never know. But the point is, they're a gift. <laughs> hey, Ariel, how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing okay. Yeah, you hanging in there? I am. Yeah. Well rested, feeling bright eyed and bushy tailed, ready to rock and roll this morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, I meant that question for Matilda. Matilda, how yeah. are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm caffeinated. Ooh, yes, yes. I know. I'm on my second round of caffeine. I had coffee and I was like, more drugs. So I'm drinking a Diet Coke now. I'm hoping by the end of the bottom of this can is going to be, instead of this fake awakeness, actual awakeness. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm excited. I miss you guys. I'm ready to geek out about some horror movies with you today. We're going to be reviewing Sarah's selections, which is always, uh, you never know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think these are going to be a lot of fun to talk about today, which is Porno and the Last Matinee. So that should be good is this a first are either of these a first watch for anybody porno was for me okay yeah, these about, were both a first watch for me nice i'd say yeah, last matinee was me. a first watch for me oh okay. oh okay so you were like rolling the dice i love it yeah well i had actually been listening to a podcast and like the, the, they were talking about it and they were they didn't give any spoilers mm-hmm. but they didn't they didn't give any spoilers they were just talking about how like <laughs> like both of them really love this movie and if it had come out you know it would have made their top 10 list that kind of thing so i was i was yeah. i was curious yep. yeah well i mean they they make a lot of sense yeah. together yeah this is a really yeah. good as a mm-hmm. cohesive selection and uh mm-hmm. like matilda said fits in with our extended episode which we'll get into in the end <laughs> <laughs> sure does awesome okay cool 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 so ariel let's circle back to you yeah oh no <laughs> i want to know from you What's been going on in your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> have you taken a face full of skunk uh, recently? Or I have of- not, but I did okay. get accosted by raccoons last night. Shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> not- what? Dude, uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Raccoons, plural. Yes. Raccoons well, they usually plural. hang out in gangs. Yep, they sure yeah. as hell do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I'm just picturing them like walking down the street snapping. <laughs> no, like one pulls my- out a comb, brushes the tear <laughs> back. <laughs> my my ex used to live in a in a neighborhood in the Monterey Bay that there were raccoons that would sit on the block and like look at you like what are you doing in in our neighborhood huh and like I mean literally like <laughs> walk up on their hind legs to your car like throwing signs and shit you're like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the dumpster kings uh, this is dumpster king territory yeah. Right, right. <laughs> So, so, yeah, I mean, raccoons hang out in gangs and, uh, you know, it, I'm sure, Ariel, I'm yeah. sure you, you've got quite a story. Okay, tell us, tell us about the incident with the trash pandas. <laughs> All right, so I was taking my dog for a walk last night and it was about 10 p.m. And so nobody in my apartment complex was out. It was just completely empty. And there are a bunch of different buildings, like 12 different buildings. And so I sort of turn the corner and go to this walk past this one building and I look over because I thought there was a real chubby cat sitting in front of the building (laughs) and And then it pulled out a switchblade and you're like oh no that's a raccoon (laughs) so I pull my phone out to take a picture of the chubby cat for you guys (laughs) oh my god blame it on us And as I'm getting my phone out, that is when the cat stands on its hind legs and I realize it is no cat. It is a very chubby, very large raccoon. Amazing. (laughs) And then from behind the bush come multiple other raccoons. (gasps) What? It was the honeypot raccoon. It was trapping me. (laughs) Yeah, it was catfishing. And I had my dog with me who did not seem to notice anything was happening. (laughs) There was no barking, no growling, no attempts to protect me. 
yeah, as these get you a bigger started, dog right <laughs> your dog is probably like please protect me yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> at least he wasn't talking shit which he sometimes does right that is true she has been known to get us into tussles <laughs> that's the skunk issue yeah. yes that was the skunk <laughs> issue <laughs> anyways they started slow walking towards me and i started oh, to like yeah. pull my dog to back away and then they started running and i took off <gasps> what oh. <laughs> luckily once i got halfway down sort of the block away from them they turned and ran back to the apartment that they were in front of so i don't know what those people are going to do when they need to leave hopefully nobody needed to leave that night because they were doing some kind of stake out there. I don't know what was happening. Maybe they maybe they know after 10 p.m. after the clock strikes. The streets 10 PM, are theirs. You <laughs> stay inside. Yeah. Yeah. I think that must be the only answer. I just imagine they were just so chubby. They're like, <laughs> all right, that's enough. Have it was the roundest raccoon I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, oh I've God. seen some pretty big, pretty chubby raccoons. Yeah, yeah. I think it was being very well fed from the dumpsters. I do feel raccoon. like if you want, if someone wanted to entrap a zombie girl, putting a <laughs> chubby animal somewhere. Oh yeah, that'd do it. <laughs> like a like an unusually round animal is really the way to go. For us. I like them big. I like them chunky. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, that was a good tight ten on raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did not comes expect to, to go here right? this morning. <laughs> but that's true. Anytime I get on the call with you guys, I have no idea what the hell we're going to talk about because who knows? <laughs> in this like I like the island of misfit weirdos that you live on, Ariel, you just <laughs> never know where the stories are going to go. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. Just some quick little uh, housekeeping business announcements for patrons. Uh, we have our uh, second live show coming this month. It's Women in Horror Month. Happy Women in Horror Month, everyone. To celebrate, we will be <laughs> talking about two movies directed by men, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a really fun Women in Horror Month episode coming up. We're going to be playing a little game called ally wars where we will be putting some of the men on the network and in our lives to the test to see who is the greatest feminist ally amongst us it's gonna be a lot of fun uh if you are a patient you'll be able to participate by joining in the conversation while we're recording or if you're in the discord even better uh we'll be taking questions and taking your feedback live it'll be a lot of fun so we hope that you join us um again that's going to happen on march 26th we don't have the exact time sorted out yet but there'll be tons of announcements moving forward so if you want to be a part of that and we would love you to be there'll be plenty of information out there especially through our social media um i think that's all the housekeeping we have so let's get into what we have been watching ariel <laughs> By the way, your notes here are cracking me up. <laughs> <Doc>. <laughs> Her notes are just, we are all collectively pretending we didn't watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre or what? <laughs> well, because I went on to put my my notes in there and nobody had put Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And you're like, I know all you assholes watched it because we watched it together as a live watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh... But we I think we gotta so do it. Angry. We gotta just <laughs> briefly touch on Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it's been the biggest release since the last time we recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it has. So <gasps> we all, like Rachel said, watched it together with mm -hmm. some of our patrons, which was a really good thing because it made the experience more enjoyable. <laughs> that was the best part. <laughs> that was definitely the best part because I think I can speak for everyone and say that we were pretty mad at this movie, both in how it sort of did this annoying political both sides bullshit, mm -hmm. how none of the characters were very well developed. All of them were kind of irritating and especially, especially the way they treated our girl, Sally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dirty, dirty, yeah. Yeah. and dirty. Yeah. Also, yeah. and I know this is way, way less important than the bullshit they did to Sally, which is just making me upset on a level <clears throat> rivaled only by Halloween kills. <laughs> uh, the other thing that made me upset was just that, I mean, I know we all like the blood and the gore, but to me, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was always just more about being disturbed. Do you know what I mean? And not yeah. just like... Yeah. wall to wall blood gushing everywhere and i felt like this movie really really lost that 
And there was no cannibalism mentioned in this one too, which I feel You're like right. there is no really cannibalism takes in away here. from how fucking disturbing that original movie was or is. That's yeah. A good point. Yeah. Well, I even watched uh, the 2003 remake, mm-hmm. and I remember I didn't like it at all. I was just okay. like, ugh. And, but then rewatching it, I was like, you know what? This is actually a pretty like tense movie. Hmm. Gotcha. I might have so, to check that one out. Like, I've never seen it. Yeah, the, the, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I always say, you know, poor Leatherface was just at home trying to get some work done, trying to do some meal prep. And these teenage, these teenagers keep trying like, to make some bird breaking, bone in, breaking into the house. You know? I mean, all he was doing was standing his ground. Oh, here we go. The original ground stander. <laughs> oh, my God. And now I mean, the dissenting opinion, Matilda. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what if I told her it was just like I love everything about this movie? You would all be so you shocked. Guys, it just went over your head. You don't understand how it's a commentary on our current state of social oh media. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe I was the least disappointed because there is a thing that I have, as we know, we've talked about with slashers that like, at this point, I feel like they are the abusive relationship where like, you don't go to Home Depot to try to buy ice cream. Like, it's not where I go to try to look for anything good yeah. happening <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> burn <laughs> all right so it's just it's it's just like having been you know because they will break your heart you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah i mean i love the original texas dream chainsaw massacre it's so, so good much. i rewatched yeah. it that's the other thing is i rewatched it literally hours before our live show because it had been made. a few years mistakes were made and oh man does the new one <laughs> not do well in direct comparison to the no. original like yeah. one, thing, one thing I gotta say though is that like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of those movies that's better the grainier the film. Mm-hmm. I've seen like the 4K transfer where everything's oh, all really? nice and pretty and clean, Ooh, and it's like no. who wants no, that? No, Nobody asks work. for that, right? right? I mean, that's how does it be gritty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I feel so... like since the '80s, this is just a genre that is is meant to break your heart and disappoint you. Oh, I disagree, but I understand where you're coming from. Like, yeah. I absolutely love, 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 love the first one. The second one, I absolutely love because it's just bizarre. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bonkers. The, yeah. The, the the third one's got a, a got kind of a mean streak in it uh-huh. that gives it more of a darker feel. But the, yeah, like after that. So I'm going to say positive things about Texas Chainsaw Massacre just because there are some things I do think Mm -hmm. that are good about the movie. Just to be fair. That being said, I want to make it clear I did not like the movie. (laughs) But (laughs) I do think that there are moments where this movie is actually quite beautiful. That's true. The scene in the sunflowers stands out. The scene where with the where he holds up the face is actually really iconic and cool looking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um there's a, a scene before the bus massacre where he's silhouetted in a uh in a alleyway that's really mm-hmm. incredible. And then I do think that the scene in the bedroom where she's under the bed and he's like getting his yeah, he's getting the tense. chainsaw and then he fights the mm-hmm. like local bumpkin is actually really great. It's and the gore in this thing is wild wild that ambulance scene is bonkers i mean using Mm -hmm. like a compound fracture to stab somebody with their own bones is pretty Mm -hmm. great i think everybody keeps talking about the bus scene but i actually didn't like that scene very much but Mm -hmm. it's all right yeah Yeah. it's too much for texas chainsaw it's too frenetic and fast that's fair that's yeah, fair. the thing where she's under the bed, I did feel like Netflix was like, oh, you thought this was, you thought we were not going to go there with gore? Like, guess what? Yeah. We're really mm-hmm. going to go there. <laughs> I mean, it's a Fede Alvarez joint, so I think that's, like, baked into the project. I know mm-hmm. he didn't direct it, but he produced it, but he's the mm-hmm. person that did the Evil Dead remake. And I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I do think when his name comes with some of that, sure, is like like now he's doing an aliens movie, which I have a lot of feelings about. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings about. It. He's got like a fifty percent like hit it out of the park to yeah. total shit the bed for me. Yeah. So I'm like, it could be one way or the other. Right, we'll see. Right, yeah, I have um, concerns. Mm-hmm. I have major concerns, especially after what they did to Sally. 
I would be Hell nervous yeah. about female don't characters. Don't breathe and... too. Don't forget. Don't breathe right. too. Where he right. lionizes a rapist. So let's. Oof. It could go either way, but there are things that that are actually quite good about this movie. That being said, none of them are the writing. Let's move forward. <laughs> what else have we been I just, I just have one last thing to say. Oh, sorry. Yes. And please. that is nobody has also commented on the fact that poor Leatherface only gets one face in this movie. I feel like he needs more options. You know? You're right. Right. But he needs a costume and, change. Yeah. He's like, and, he's and like a share farewell his, tour. We do see his face in the movie, his real face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't like mm-hmm. that. That's not okay. Mm-mm. Yeah, as soon no. as they walked, as soon as that person walked, walked yeah. into that, I was like, there he is. That's him. Yeah. Damn it. Yep. I did love that kitchen scene, though, where he's, like, reflected in the pot. Just yeah. Just visual yeah, moments that's in true. it. Yeah. That's true. All right. What okay. else have you been watching, Miss Ariel? I watched the new Scream movie, finally. Okay, no spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers. Oh, oh I enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, enjoyed Rachel, that you movie. were supposed to watch it. I know. For next month. Next month you have to watch it so we I can promise, talk about it. I promise. I promise. Okay. I promise. I just, like... Truly have not had time. <laughs> I know. Um, but okay, so what I will say is I had a lot of fun watching this one. Okay. I have seen all of the other screen movies multiple times, and then I did a rewatch leading up to it and just like renewed my love of this franchise. I had mm. a really fun time with this one too. There are some great like moments and where they're, you know, kind of showing you things that happened in the original ones and little touches about Wes Craven and and things like that that as a fan are going to make you feel like warm inside you know um but I also have a few problems with it I don't think I can talk about them though without spoiling anything so it's probably gonna have to wait until next month Okay. I just All love right. that I can hear you smiling as you talk about it. You sounded like you had I the just, best I time. I love the Scream movies so much. Even the bad ones. Even number three. I still I still love them. So. Yeah. Nice. Um, are, so if I think they've announced that there's going to be a sequel. Mm-hmm. Having seen what Radio Silence did with the, the franchise. do you, Are you excited to see where they will take it next? I am because of some of the things that happened in this one. I have a couple of concerns because of some of the things I didn't like about this movie, but mm, okay, I can see that. Is this movie gonna piss me off? No, I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so. Okay, it good. might make you a little sad. In I know spot. I saw one spoiler, so <laughs> oh no, yeah, I saw. One. You, did I don't, you get the big spoiler ruined? I don't you? know who the I do not know who the who the ghost face is, but I saw someone who dies. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That's a bummer. Yeah. Fuck you, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. People I really did everyone dirty on Twitter. I had to stay like I was so careful about spoilers mm-hmm. and it was really hard because it was like the day after it hit theater. People were just like announcing who died. What yeah. the fuck is that? I saw like a petition to bring <gasps> back the character and I was like, well, oh, really? there we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuck you, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? That Let's just, sucks. I'm, I'm just going to say there if and when another scream comes out, mm-hmm. if the original characters don't return, there is a nice end to their story in this one. Yes, but it leaves room. It leaves it leaves a door at least cracked for them. Yeah, mm. that's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting, interesting. I promise I will watch it. Pinky promise. Good. Trust me. Also on the Discord, seeing giant blocks of. Spoiler text. <laughs> the FOMO is so real for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually a little excited. I'm a little excited to watch this one too. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, go back to that abusive boyfriend. <laughs> 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 go get I just that Home Depot ice cream. <laughs> I prefer a reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, and then the last thing I watched was the new Kristen Bell show um, that mm-hmm. she did for Netflix with the impossibly long title, The Woman oh, in the yeah. House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. I've not heard uh-huh. the best things about this. So it's real weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's like on, uh, most of it, I would say three quarters of it takes itself really seriously and is just sort of a normal mystery thriller about this woman who is dealing with a trauma and coping by drinking copious amounts of red wine and staring out her window and sort of rear window style sees what she thinks is a murder happen 
And that all happens in the first episode. And then it's about it's about her trying to solve that murder and kind of deal with her past. And Kristen Bell plays everything super straight. Mm -hmm. But then it's also supposed to be a satire of those kind of girl, you know, uh, girl in the the window, girl in the train, Mm -hmm. those kind of movies. And it does that in really odd ways where I felt real confused as a viewer for a lot of it. So for instance, somebody in her life died before the show started. And when she describes how they died, it's so outlandish and so goofy that I thought it was a dream sequence she was going to wake up from and then tell us how she really died. But that doesn't happen. That's actually what happened. And things like that keep happening where there's like this guy who's constantly fixing her mailbox and he's just there every day fixing the same thing. And it made me think, okay, are we doing like a Groundhog's Day thing? Like what's happening here? But nope, that's just part of the plot. It's just totally normal. So yeah, some of the tone of it I found to be a little confusing and I'm not put off by satire right I mean I I usually like that kind of thing and I like stuff that's self-referential but Mm -hmm. um, to me it was like it really worked about three quarters of the time and then part of the time the tone shift was so dramatic that it just kind of threw me so yeah I, I was left like I had a fun time while watching it but I was left not knowing how to how to feel or even like how I would review it you know what I mean it was just so odd but I love Kristen Bell so it's fun just like watching her on screen all the time I do love her that goes Mm -hmm. a long way yeah but (laughs) but it's like the whole thing is pretty sort of PG and then all of a sudden out of nowhere there's this super raunchy everyone naked sex scene that just goes on and on where they're having sex in like every room of her house and again you're just like wait what's happening here (laughs) Like, how did this go from, you know, Disney to, like, I don't know, Skinamax or something? <laughs> okay. So would you recommend? I don't know. I have no that idea. That sounds like a no. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a no, but I love Kristen Bell and it's testing my loyalty. That's, that's what yeah, I'm hearing that right now. Just, you know, if you have a mystery in it. Uh, part of me is going to oh, like it. Oh, my God, know? Ariel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am who I am. What are you going to do? I, I'm nothing. I love you just as you are. I, want, I, I tease you, but I think you're a perfect human. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Matilda. What have, Speaking of perfect humans, Matilda, what have oh. you been watching? Well, speaking of mysteries, so I took Ariel's recommendation and watched Buried, yes. which is the oh, Showtime documentary videos. about the um, reco- the first case prosecuted related to recovered memory. Yeah. It's really good. You all should watch <laughs> is this it. The, is this the Sisters in, in Oregon or Washington? No, this is, is a Bay Area sheriff? case. It's Foster okay. City. And it's a, a, it's a woman who remembers in like, it's 1989. So kind of early recovered memory times. Um, and she remembers that she saw her father sexually assault and kill her good friend who was a little girl who had disappeared in the neighborhood oh i remember this i remember this case yeah yeah so this documentary does a really good job except they give a lot of time to elizabeth loftus who has not used her theory for good in the world i'll just say yeah um but it's such a good if anything it is such a good critique of how our legal system is not actually set up to have satisfying justice for people who were sexual assault survivors. Mm. Yeah, because what you learn throughout it without giving too much away is just that even if you don't believe her recovered memories, something clearly happened to her. Yeah. And this may just be a way of sort of dealing with that and getting some sort of justice because the criminal justice system can't help her with what actually really happened to her Mm -hmm. but it's fascinating because you get to watch a lot of the trial and tons of interviews with people involved and experts it's a really well put together documentary yeah it really is it really is but also go look up elizabeth loftus after you've watched yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah matilda pointed me towards some articles (laughs) yeah yeah it was great 
it was it was a really well done documentary. Um, and there's an excellent article on the Blotter Presents, which is um, a really good true crime podcast. Used to be a podcast and now is more of a blog around true crime stuff that has a pretty great review mm-hmm. of this too. The second thing I've been watching is that that was also a recommendation last time is that our <laughs> I can't listener, believe you went for this. This is wild. Our <laughs> listener Doug uh, uh, said that he had a slasher that maybe I would <gasps> you like. You watched ca- it <laughs> called Queens of Evil from 1970. Yes. Was it, first of all, was it a slasher for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> it's pretty sexy. Okay, I assumed. It's one of those, like, I watched it on YouTube, and it was one of those please confirm your age kind of videos. Um, Oh, my goodness. However, (laughs) and the, the, the print that I watched is dubbed in English with subtitles, but the subtitles are different from the dubbing, both oh, in English. No. <laughs> oh, that's always been worse. Oh, so you got the full experience. <laughs> However, Doug, I was into this. Oh. Um, okay. This is a really weird and beautiful movie. Beautiful movie okay. about a guy, uh, like a motorcyclist who breaks down and goes to this house with these three mysterious, beautiful women. Mm-hmm. And Ariel and Rachel both, I feel like you need to watch this. The aesthetics of this are so gorgeous oh, okay. in the way okay. that like Stepford Wives wants to be. Oh, like if like Stepford oh. Wives was an art film, it's mm, okay. I'm like in. a Cinemax art film. This is it. I'm, am I going to be watching it like it's fashion research? I mean, like, taking yes, notes? there's actually a point where like the this isn't a spoiler. The guy like is rifling through their closets and I'm like, stop and linger on those dresses. Oh, see, like, you got me. You got mm-hmm. me. I'm in. I mean, I'm wig in. cop is going to be upset, but also like it's pretty figural. Like they, they're pretty <laughs> clear that the wigs switch pretty dramatically throughout. So, oh, dear. Um, <laughs> it made me like it made me wish that I ran a nightclub night because this would be a great movie to project on the wall through the whole thing. You know, oh, like uh, really? Yes. Okay, next backyard barbecue. Oh, right. yes. Throw the projector on. You really <laughs> so should see what and... my neighbors think of that. <laughs> yeah, like between the fashion and the home decoration, I feel like this is really phenomenal. It is very dreamy and but there's it's it's there's lots of sexiness. Okay. So just I mean, be aware of that. And there's one scene of animal violence. Eh. Um, I shouldn't say that. There's a scene of uh, early stages of taxidermy mm. on okay, a squirrel. Gotcha. So I will let you know where that is if you okay. decide to watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All yeah. Right. So well, thank you for the recommendation. A- I was thrilled. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Yeah. That's no exciting. Kidding. <laughs> it was pretty. Okay. It was pretty fun. Because um, watching that trailer, it was hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Sounds like maybe we, it was pretty representative after all, though. Yeah. It was. The, the trailer was actually pretty. Yeah. So watch the tra- If you're interested, watch the trailer and see what you think. But uh, the whole thing's on YouTube. So. Well, as a fan of movies like Censor, I feel like maybe this is going to be for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, did I, the, uh, it looks like you have a recommendation here. I do have a recommendation. Um, this is a recommendation of a reality TV show that I watched that if you like gore. Oh, God, I know what this is. Okay. I think you're going to like this show that, you know, I watch Hulu and most of what I watch it for is like the news and horror movies. So my first recommendation when I turned it on this week was this show called this came out of me has anyone else watched this Uh, i have not (laughs) i'm writing it down right now yeah sarah i think that i think you might dig this so this is an er in texas it's on discovery there's only two episodes so far i think the first it's a lot of like uh work accidents so people like impaled coming in impaled on things oof a lot of draining of really intense pussy things (laughs) like if you watch dr pimple popper and are like this is for amateurs i feel like you should watch this show like and it like somebody comes in with their hand shredded from a car accident and you watch all the stitches getting put in oh damn nope 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 nope, because i i like there was those shows that 
uh, I used to watch them when we were staying with my parents. There was one, it was like, uh, like weird things in the ER or something like that, but it was, they were like simulations. And then another one was like, uh, like, uh, sex sent me to the ER. I have seen that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah, all reenactments, I, I, I think. Yeah. I have not been in this genre much. This reminded me more of like when they used to show actual surgery uh-huh. on TV. Gotcha. Like this is kind of that gory. Okay. <laughs> um, if you are made nervous by physical phenomenon, this show is not for you. Because unfortunately they tell you like, here's the thing that this person has wrong with their finger. And they the doctor comes on in a talking head and says like, if untreated, this is how this could kill you. Gotcha. Oh God. Mm-hmm. So that's probably not good for people who have a little like medical anxiety <laughs> stuff. Or, yeah. Can um, identify. Absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I know. Because initially I was like, Rachel, this is maybe free. But then it started to get it into that stuff. And I was like, no. Mm-mm. You're like, I'm going to spiral, my friend. <laughs> yeah. No. I was like, pump the brakes. Don't watch it. <laughs> I was like very excited when I saw the picture you sent and then the story of the man with the inflamed peen. Yeah. But then then I dug a little deeper and I was like, oh no. Like, yeah. like two minutes guy, later you texted me, you're like, never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> yeah, there was the first episode has a very good natured gentleman who ha- has an inflamed penis. And he's like, I must have done something wrong. <laughs> And he just has a really good attitude through the whole thing, I gotta say. So, um, but if this the is man you know, with the if... inflamed penis and a good attitude, <laughs> <laughs> that guy was great. Especially, I mean, if you're on TV and you know, yeah, your turn on TV says John, <laughs> and under your name it says swollen penis. Like you're a good sport, right? That's yeah. true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. So right. if but if you are a gorehound, this you might want to check this out. Good to know. Yeah. Speaking of gorehounds, Sarah, what have you been watching? <laughs> uh, finally caught up on on and finished the first season of Yellow Jackets. Excellent. Yes. Oh my god, fucking amazing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I it and I was interested in the show, and then like, uh, one of my favorite bands from the '90s, their drummer was like, was like, had to wait till episode seven to hear our song, you know. And uh, but uh, I gotta say. When they're walking into uh, in, into the the dooms coming, and yes. Geppetto by Belly is playing, that yeah. had uh-huh. to have been the most <laughs> perfect pick, so especially good. when it sh- it closes up on Misty's face with Queen. Tanya Donnelly singing, "If you bore me, you you'll you lose your soul to me." Wow, I mean, it really did not answer any of the questions that it keeps putting forward, and I know they're looking at doing a five season arc of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so like Can't i'm wait. really hoping i'm really hoping it maintains or or because i don't know how if it could get necessarily better you know fair. i just fair how do I just you top this... that perfect season <laughs> yeah even if this was the end of it it'd be left with a lot of questions but still feel satisfied mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but i'm true. really happy that there's gonna be more seasons like i mm-hmm. i look forward to this yeah mm-hmm. Me too. And I'm glad they already have it plotted out too. This isn't a Game of Thrones situation. You know? Yeah. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Too soon. <laughs> but yeah, Yellow Jackets is fantastic. And just hearing you talk about it makes me want to go and watch it again right now. It's so yep. good. And then the other thing I was watching, which isn't horror related, but it was a nice palate cleanser and change of pace after, especially after some of those Yellow Jacket episodes that you've, you know, watched before bed. <laughs> is yeah. uh is the tv show jane the virgin which is available on netflix um it is a it's it's a telenovela yeah, yeah. it is yeah, 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 it is, yeah. Very it is a telenovela in english and it's it is absurd but it is funny mm-hmm. i love the like, is it the stepdad or the da- actual dad the dad who's Rahil? like the telenovela star yeah he's, he's my yeah. Great. favorite <laughs> my favorite part of that show yeah so that's that's what i've been watching nice all right cool so i have not had a lot of time to watch things that are not specifically for a podcast so the one thing i've squeezed in was the first three episodes of the new uh apple series severance have any of you ladies also watched this 
No, not yet. I had not. Mm-hmm. I intentionally stayed away because I thought it was going to be that near future tech dystopia shit I hate. But you <gasps> sort of told me it might not be. I mean, it has a mystery. So yeah. like the, it's very <laughs> it, the mystery is very compelling. There is a little near tech dystopia, but I think the mystery will carry you through. OK. All right. And it, it has a really incredible cast as like Christopher Walken and Adam Scott. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You got to watch it. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> all right. So Adam Scott plays this guy, Mark, who is part of this small team of office workers who have a medical procedure done called severance, where while they are at work, they they have no memory of who they are in real life. And while they are in their real life, they have no memory of work. That's so dark. It is, but it sets up an opportunity for a really compelling mystery. Okay. Because mm. there's basically these character, all of these actors are two characters. There's the person who they are mm-hmm. outside and inside. And when um, someone from the inside makes contact with Mark, even though he's not supposed to be able to, outside and like kind of presents him with like, what are we doing inside that building? Um, it creates this really interesting mystery because there's like internal conflict that's happening with Mark inside of work. And then there's him starting to question what's happening outside of work because he has like no way of knowing. So you're watching him kind of unfold the mystery on two different levels. Gotcha. Okay. That does sound fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Patricia Arquette is in it and she's amazing. She plays his boss and uh, she's kind of (laughs) terrifying to be honest. She's, she's pretty great at this. And there's a lot of question of like who's severed and who isn't and what why why do they have to do this and what is the history of this company that's like 200 years old and what are they really even doing and within that there's also this very strange dynamic of what do each of these different teams do and what teams actually exist because they're also completely discreet from one another when except for when they accidentally run into each other in the hallways and things like that but they're not really even supposed to do that Gotcha. Um, so yeah, interesting. It, it looks like corporate dystopia more than like near future yeah. tech stuff. Is that right? Yes. That's that's a better okay. way of describing uh-huh. it. It's more like, yeah. And it, it's oh, the interplay between the two selves is interesting. Like this one woman wants to get out so badly, but her outside version wants her to work there. And so they're, but they have no way of communicating with one another. Oh, Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's right. really interesting. So it like explores identity, like uh, 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 interesting ideas about identity. It has so much style. Like the style of it is kind of reminiscent of that like 1960s or 70s British sci-fi series, The Prisoner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. all gotcha. very sterile and white, but then with like very like subtle geometric design, like aesthetically, it's almost like a, a science experiment i don't know you guys should definitely check it out also john tutoro is amazing oh i it. love him so much he's so good in it okay nice <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you guys should definitely check out severance it's like i'm obsessed with it um it's like a top tier for this year i think oh. like number one is yellow jackets number two is peacemaker and this is number three huh. so yeah i would definitely check all of those out if you haven't servant too that should be on that list oh i know only i I haven't had a chance to watch this much of the season yet that's part of the problem but we'll talk about i think by the next episode the season will have wrapped and we can talk about it good yeah i'll catch up so that is what i have been watching let's take a quick break and then get back into our review of i'm guessing porno first or last monday okay all right cool Hi, everyone. I'm Alex West. And I'm Andrea Subisati, and we're from the Faculty of Horror podcast. And you're listening to the Zombie Girls podcast. Hello, everyone. We're back. Let's talk about a heartwarming, (laughs) family-friendly, good morals, a (laughs) life-affirming little tale called Porno. So first and (laughs) foremost, these were all, these were uh, Sarah picks. Sarah, what made you select porno? Okay, so 
when you initially said that you saw that you watched porno and oh, that Randy was balled up on the couch yes. in tears. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, 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 I had to see it. Normally, anything that would that would make uh, that would make producer Randy cry, I would you know want to punch it in the throat. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know this this was pretty funny. This, this movie was good, and I, I I had kind of it had been one of those ones I had seen like trailers for it and stuff. And I was like, oh, this looks like like it's going to be a lot of fun. And then it kind of like fell off the radar. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, like, popped back up, and it was like, yeah, I mean, fucking have a great time watching this movie. I can sympathize with, with producer Randy on that, you, on that scene. You know exactly like, what scene it is. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We all know. <laughs> you know. When I said we were watching it again, he did a full body shudder. <laughs> <laughs> and we watched this when it came out. He's, yeah. he's doing and it then, right now. He's literally shuddering right now. <laughs> Uh, he's having a flashback <laughs> yes i don't think i i mean i he is a little bit of a prude when it comes to mm-hmm. movies so like one of my favorite activities as matilda knows is to freeze frame butts on screen and be like randy come look at this and then he's like oh ow, ow. like like if i can get a hairy butt crack oh that is a 10 out of 10 so this movie <laughs> was a challenge and then the scene happened and i thought he I, I don't know if he's back on this ethereal plane even today. <laughs> he blasted out of his body. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Which, of course, means it has a very special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and then I figured going with the uh, theater motif, I was going to I was initially going to pick popcorn. Oh, but, yeah. You know, which is a fun movie. I love that movie. But. Then I had heard some really good things about Last Matinee, and I decided to roll the dice on it and say, fuck it, let's do that one instead. Perfect. So, uh, Ariel, you have the background for porno. Tell us about this movie. Yeah. Um, before I get into that, Sarah, can you give our listeners their spoiler oh, warning? Oh, thank fuck. Yes, oh, thank yeah. you. Our spoiler warning. If you're a first-time listener, uh, just so you know, we spoil the shit out of everything. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's pretty so go watch these movies if you have it because they're going to be spoiled <laughs> perfect all right now ariel tell me about this movie all right so porno is directed by keola Rosella, and after directing a few short films and working as an editor and an ad on a few others he got a call from some of his close friends from film school they had all gone to columbia's graduate film program And they asked if he wanted to make a horror movie with them because they knew someone who was willing to give them a small amount of money if they made a film really quickly. And he was like, yes, immediately. Yes, let's do it. So in July of 2017, they asked him to direct, but there wasn't a script yet or even a concrete idea of what the film was going to be about. And by early November of that same year, they had wrapped shooting. Whoa. Mm. So they came up with the idea in a week and then wrote the first draft of the script in just four days. <laughs> this is like a Tammy and the T-Rex production, yeah. is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, basically. Was that person a mobster? Did he have an animatronic <laughs> uh, T-Rex that he wanted so to So I could not find any information about the mysterious person who gave them money, so maybe? I don't know. In a twist, it was the owner of the, the, the nudie uh, theater. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he's taking his plot global. <laughs> So, yeah, they came up with the script in four days and then shot the whole thing in just 22 days, which is just wild. It always surprises me how quickly people can make movies. So they decided to make this movie about a group of sexually repressed religious young people because they thought that that would be sort of the most they they thought that they would be the most affected by what happens in this film. And Mike Black, who is one of the screenwriters, he actually grew up in an evangelical community in Oklahoma. And even though his family wasn't religious, they pulled a lot from his experience while writing. And the director said that it was really important to Mike Black to not have any of the jokes be just at the expense of religious people. Like he didn't want to demean their faith. He just wanted to kind of capitalize on that sort of purity and innocence culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In an interview with Jump Cut Online, Rosella, the director, talked about how they tried to handle the issue of male gaze in this film. He said that it was really tricky, especially because in the film, there's a nude succubus Mm -hmm. (laughs) who is encountering male characters. And he said that there's also sort of an inherent male gaze there because it's men that are looking at her 
And also, he sort of wondered aloud in a couple interviews if being a male director makes it almost impossible for him to completely divorce himself from that, no matter how much he tries. Mm. But he said they really tried to balance things. So in this interview, he said, I think for as much as we show our succubus, we tried to put in as much male nudity as possible to try and offset that. (laughs) Inside and out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He said, it's a movie about a succubus, but usually in horror films, there's a trope where women are punished for sexuality, you know, in slasher films. But in this film, we tried to flip it a little bit. It's the oppressed ones who get punished and it's the men's who get their dicks ripped off. So, you know, whether or not we pull that off is up to other people to decide. Pull that off. (laughs) (laughs) There is a lot. You know, now that you say that, there is actually a fair amount of uh, nudity parody in this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and a fair amount of like men being punished for desire. Yeah, that's uh-huh. really true. So part of the appeal of directing a horror film for him was being able to use practical effects. So originally they had actually planned to have five times as many sort of physical gags in the movie. Really? But because of financial constraints, they had to narrow it down and focus on just a few. And I'm guessing you can picture all of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so The film that the kids find in this movie, the sort of movie within a movie, was actually based on the short films of queer filmmaker Kenneth Anger. I can see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I figured Sarah would know who that was. So he was an occultist and a self-proclaimed Lucifer devotee who made super experimental films. Mm. And Rosella cited films like Scorpio, like Scorpio Rising in and Invocation of My Demon Brother as kind of inspirations for what they put together for this. Mm, Okay. So while they were shooting, they didn't have a name for this film. So actors and other people started suggesting titles. And one of the people suggested Real Demon, but with real spelled like a film reel. Oh. And someone else suggested child of uh, suggested children of the porn. That's pretty good. I no one suggested it's a demon, baby. <laughs> That's a callback. That's a callback. <laughs> but they decided that children of the porn sounded too much like those horror parody pornos that Sarah watches. Uh, yeah, it yeah. sounds more fair, concerning fair. than it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, so it premiered at South by Southwest in 2019, and then it was almost immediately picked up by Fangoria, who helped them to do a virtual theatrical release because of the pandemic. Yay. As for what everybody is doing now, currently the two writers and the director of porno are working on a trio of horror movies, but have yet to say what they're about or when they'll be released, but they seem very excited about it. So I'm super curious. As soon as they write it, they'll let us know. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Next week. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. That's what I got. Awesome. Great job. I always enjoy your backgrounds. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you. Well, this one was interesting because I had forgotten what Sarah had said about not just Googling the title of this movie. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> what did, did you, you know Google? that X Hamster is a porn site? I didn't know that. X Hamster? X Hamsters. <laughs> it popped up in my Google searches and it will never be the same again. Is it like <laughs> What is it? So I decided not to click on that link (laughs) okay (laughs) yeah ariel's algorithms are messed up enough from her zip code she doesn't yeah right Right. exactly thank you can you imagine what spam text we're gonna get now (laughs) (laughs) like we hear you like hamsters oh god (laughs) six 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 desperate hamsters six six Sixty-nine, sixty-nine. All right. Synopsis. Making Lay it on us. In your area. <laughs> Hot and ready hamsters. <laughs> Looking to meet you. Oh my god. <laughs> Hamster milfs. Oh no. <laughs> All right, Matilda, give us a synopsis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Porno, as Ariel was saying, is directed by Keola Rosella, and it stars Evan Davies, Larry Saperstein, 
Jillian Mueller and Robbie Tan as Heavy Metal Jeff. Best I'm guessing them. you're going to have some thoughts on oh Heavy Metal <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> in a small Christian town in 1992, a group of young movie theater employees have a private after-hours screening of a mysterious movie they found in the storage room, unleashing a supernaturally sexy and threatening force. So this is your pick. So let's start with you, Sarah. What, what did you think of porno? I, I find it really funny. I find some of the points they touch on really good. I mean, the whole thing is just is just fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it's gross and it's gory and it's pretty funny and just a good time. <laughs> how about you, Matilda? What did you think of Pono? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but I kind of thought this was fun. It's interesting to hear the background of this because I feel like for a kind of horror comedy sex romp about teenage boys, it could go this way where it's like using their desire, but like the, the punchline of their desire ends up like getting enacted on women's bodies. And it doesn't really do that. Yes. No, oh, that's that's at so all. The, the, the yeah. two little horn dogs are kind of the punchline. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do think it does yeah. a good job with thinking about teenagers' Christian struggle in a pretty sincere way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is the anti-Christian side hug. Film. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. And I loved, like, each one's little, like, sex backstory, kind of. Uh-huh. And... Heavy Metal Jeff, I thought, was like camping it up in a pretty hilarious way with his big straight edge. I yeah. totally agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to show up to the heavenly gates smelling like cigarettes? <laughs> I do I love in through. my body. You drink 60, 64 ounces of Diet Coke a yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that he goes on and on about addiction and being straight edge and stuff. And then you find out three quarters of the way through the movie that the only nicotine. addiction he's ever had is nicotine. Yes. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> So yeah funny. and there were some times that like the internal logic of this was a little confusing right sure. like even though the shots were great like that we're spoiling right like that scene where they're all yeah, looking yeah. out the front door and like the townspeople like bring their arms up and then get kind of annihilated <laughs> like uh -huh. i loved that shot uh -huh. even though i'm like I, I don't i don't know what's going on here but yeah yeah i had a good time yeah yeah i enjoyed this too i enjoyed this too I think there's really great chemistry between all of the characters and the actors, which I think is incredibly necessary in order to pull this off because it is such a contained like bubble of a, a movie mm -hmm. that if those mm -hmm. relationships didn't feel authentic or interesting, would it would be rough. And a lot of times, especially with the like indie movies, the way they write characters and exposition is to essentially make all the characters hate each other, which is something <laughs> I really dislike in indie movies sometimes. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I just, and this one you can kind of see, they don't, not necessarily people who would all be friends, but it has that kind of like teenage coworker vibe yeah. that it feels very mm -hmm. authentic to me. And the slightly older thinks he's wise, but he's actually a dumbass. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> heavy metal Jeff. We all know him. We've all yes. run into him. Like, we all worked with him. He was the guy that was, like, a little bit too old to be working at the pizza place, so he was the assistant manager. Like, that is who Heavy Metal Jeff is, yeah. and he feels like a very lived-in real character. That still needs a ride home. Mm -hmm. Yes! Yeah. Absolutely! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there's some very smart character writing in this. You can tell these came from personal experiences. These are probably based on actual people. And so I, I think that's really kind of one of the strengths. In addition to the the practical effects and gore in this, I mean, like we've been alluding to the balls exploding, which is great. It's a really oh, great man. setup with this whole story of like, you know, I, they saw it in Nam, and then it happens to him, and yeah. it's it's very <laughs> funny. And then it goes there in a way that you would never think it would go there. Yeah, and then it no, keeps it's going so back <laughs> when it gets tied yeah. up like a little like. You know, a little dumpling or a something. Dumpling. I was thinking yeah. like a dice bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I've never seen it. And it's, it's unbelievably gruesome and also freaking hilarious. It is so funny. And it looks so real too. Like they did a <laughs> really good just kind of like tries to toss it back into the oh. skin flap. It's like push, push. <laughs> So gruesome <laughs> and so funny. Uh, well, Heavy Metal Jack or whatever Jeff was just 
Oh gosh, and his face is becoming paler yeah. and whiter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love when he's like so able to resist, and then she pulls out the two cigarettes, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh no, Motor City!" <laughs> <laughs> As a former smoker, I felt very, uh, very seen by that yeah. production scene. <laughs> yeah, I also really liked the scene where she rips off the bad owners dick yes and then she holds it in her hand and just kind of flops it back and forth (laughs) yes the The reveal of the like hypocrisy of him was one of my favorite things about it and i think as someone who grew up in evangelical schools and churches i also really appreciate i know he wasn't trying to be too mean to the religious people but i do think this movie does a pretty good job of talking about the sort of the issues with sexual repression that is in that community yeah. and the way the like the weirdly childlike way it's dealt with that like, these kids like are the... so freaking naive when they're like, is this what all portos are like? You know, yeah. like that yeah. makes cool. sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the character that came back from the conversion camp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Like, that's a sad plot line. Yeah. <laughs> I, that is yeah. really sad. Although I do line. like that he gets a little action in the movie. Right. He's like, just a few more minutes. Yeah. Just a few more minutes. <laughs> She keeps saying, like, I need to stop it or you're going to die. Just, like, just, just a few more hold minutes. On. <laughs> hold on. Hang on. Almost there. Almost there. Yeah, I like that it's, like, crueler to the adults around their religiosity yeah. than it is to the yeah. kids. Yes. Yes. yes right. Yes. And you mm-hmm. see them becoming disillusioned as it goes on, especially in relation to their, you know, the owner of the theater. Mm-hmm. And I, when they find his like peephole and tapes. And yeah, stuff. what a fucking yeah. creep! And like that tracks so hard for me. Yeah. That the person mm-hmm. starting the the ending the night with a prayer circle was definitely watching people pee. Like, come on. Ugh. Um, and I love the actual porno itself. It's so cool. And and I didn't realize I don't know the cool. history of like what it's inspired by, but I put a screenshot in our little Discord chat. It looks gorgeous, and they did a good job. But it's just dreamy and creepy and like if i had seen that as a teenager i would have lost my mind Mm -hmm. (laughs) how about yeah it's really good by the way is she wearing a merkin oh oh yeah okay (laughs) merkin city (laughs) i was gonna make a joke about like when you were talking about subverting the female gaze i was like what put a merkin on it like (laughs) oh no it practically had like a tag sticking out of it like right (laughs) Right. (laughs) yeah it was like that map of tasmania video uh, the amanda palmer it was like somebody who just like cut off some muppet skin and just like oh yeah to her you know yeah Yeah. so what did you think ariel what'd you think of this movie Um, i mean i think you guys have, have touched on most of it i think that this movie is great. It's way better than I thought it was going to be going into it. I honestly was like a little unsure. I did not remember that Rachel had seen it and liked it, or I might have been a little more cautious. Gung ho. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I just, I love the premise of this. I love the setup. The movie within the movie is so great. And I know we've already touched on Heavy Metal Jeff, but one of the things that I really like are just how you sort of get to know the characters through the jokes, even the little throwaway lines Mm -hmm. in this movie are great. There's one scene where heavy metal Jeff is like teasing the kid who's like blamed for the peeping Tom behavior, but isn't. Mm -hmm. And he says, the only boobs you've ever seen are your mom's. And then the kid goes, my mom's dead. And heavy metal Jeff says, Oh yeah, prove it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because it, it one gives you background for the peeping Tom kid, but it also teaches you a lot about the kind of immature person that heavy metal Jeff really mm-hmm. is at its core. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> the money I was saving on college, I bought a I can buy a drum kit and get my band back together. <laughs> sure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go forth with that. <laughs> All right. Was there anything that maybe didn't work for you guys? Mm. Guessing you'll know what my criticism is. Is it? No, is it I that it's too, it it's too long? <laughs> oh, it's too long. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn it, Rachel. <laughs> it could be. I feel like if they they could have tightened it up a little bit. Like, that's my one criticism. Because I do generally like this movie quite a bit. I think it's a lot of fun. Like, it's kind of. it's. I, I feel like it's under the radar. People maybe missed it. So, like, and the yeah. name might be off putting. Circle back. It's fine. Yeah. It's a good time. But at an hour and 40 minutes, a little too long. That's my one criticism. <laughs> An hour and 40 minutes is not that long. Dude, it's almost two hours. It's That's two long. minutes shy. For a horror comedy? You cannot round comedy. up everything to two hours, my friend. <laughs> I disagree. I feel like I <laughs> not just allowed. did it. I just did it. 
I just did it. No, but I mean, for a horror comedy, horror comedy is like 90 minutes tops, preferably 80 minutes. That's the sweet spot. (laughs) Pretty soon you're going to have us in that situation where we're only allowed to watch movies that are the length of like horror silent films that were 65 to 75 minutes long. Too long. Too long for a silent film. (laughs) (laughs) It varies. It varies. Like everybody's seeing bat the batman this this weekend and i'm just like ooh, it's three hours three and a half hours long is it really three and a half all right that is too long that's too long i think so hold on or are you just bat- rounding up is it really like two and a i half? might be rounding up the batman <laughs> is it two hours and five minutes it just it's 93 no, minutes no 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 the batman <laughs> is two hours and 56 oh, no. minutes so i did round up okay, slightly that, you, but it's you still- round up by 40 minutes that's not slightly i rounded up by 35 Four minutes. <laughs> that is a lot of rounding. But okay. still, three hours. That's too long for a Batman movie. <laughs> Batman movies, 90 yeah, minutes. I, I actually yeah, 90 yeah. minutes. Half that runtime is perfect. That's that is the, yeah. the amount of time that you need to tell a Batman story, unless it is like a TV show. And then 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes at a time. <laughs> In Rachel's America, nothing shall exceed. <laughs> Two and a half hours, and that's only if it's an art film. <laughs> <laughs> and the slowness is the point. Oh wow! What? <laughs> what? People are getting out of control. The the freaking Snyder cut was four and a half. Ha- well, four hours long. Four hours long. <laughs> <laughs> Uncharted okay, two I, hours. That's <laughs> absurd. That I should will be give seventy it to you minutes. Some directors are getting out of control with these long ass run times yeah. but you are getting out of control with how short you need see you just need there to get a on happy board media. <laughs> imagine a world where you could watch a like a, a tight excellent film and be done in an hour and a half and back to your life but what That's if a it would also world. be better if it was a little bit longer there are some films that need more time i i disagree <laughs> oh i think God. every movie could be shorter <laughs> than it is <laughs> I, I really need to send you my the uh, fan edit that i have of uh the new suspiria it cuts it down to like an hour and a half i mean that feels long but okay <laughs> Wait, like now 90 minutes too long. What's happening? i'm just saying if we're cutting why stop <laughs> keep going we'll see you ahead chop 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, I think an hour and a half is kind of perfect. Never That's let perfect Rachel bet. in the editing. I know. Day. <laughs> yeah, right? because everyone, is, I'll expose the truth, the lies that Hollywood has been telling that you need a three hour runtime when 70 minutes was plenty. Now we're down to 70. Schindler's <laughs> List, 65 minutes. Done. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> what? You're laughing because it's true. It's funny because it's true. Well, you you could have you, Schindler's List. You could have cut out the whole romantic subplot. Well, yep, oh get it God. out of here. Gotta go. Oh, no. yeah, romance, romance under under a uh, threat of violence and duress. Yep, you know, there you the, go. That whole like Ray Fiennes subplot. And ba- kinda kept bye bye. You're gone. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Character development. You're out. Oh, who needs it? <laughs> uh, speaking of character development. Mm. Oh last God, matinee. Hurts. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Okay. Right. Cool. So, so, so we're all so so we all agree. Uh, you know that we really like porno. Yes. Yeah. Recommend yeah. porno. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a fun one. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the last matinee. Now, Sarah, you have the background for this one. The last matinee. It was uh, co-written by Maximiliano Contente and Manuel F- Facal. And uh, it was uh, directed by uh, Maximiliano Cantante. And they, they decided to uh, put together a, a th- write a throwback, basically, of Giallo and, and slasher films. And this was uh, an international co-production from both uh, Uruguay and Argentina. And it's a Spanish-language film, so yes, there's going to be subtitles when you watch this. Just be aware. I know some people don't like to watch movies with subtitles, but it was... Uh, released in in Uruguay in in September 2020 and it won the the best Ibero-American fantastic film at the Cortes Festival do Imaginario in 2020 and was a candidate for best Latin film at the 2020 Pardoma Planta International Festival. 
Now, wasn't the movie within a movie in this one actually a real movie, too? Yeah, it's called uh, Frankenstein Day of the Beast, which is directed by Ricardo Isla. And he actually, Ricardo Isla is actually the killer in the movie. Oh, oh I didn't realize that's that. That's cool. Yeah. That's super yeah. cool. Yeah, so. It makes more sense why they showed his face a couple yeah. times, too, then. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm, they sure did. <laughs> yep. I, I have the synopsis. So this is set in okay. 1993. So it's set a year later than porno is set. Interesting. I didn't even really make the connection that these were both 90, like yeah. 90 set. Films. I didn't either. In porno, you get like in they're choosing between Encino Man and um, A League of Their Own. And that's how you know. Yeah. But in this one, it's not as clear. Yeah. Um, all right. So. In 1993, in a downtown cinema, the last showing of a horror movie plays, but a crazed killer quietly picks off matinee audience members one by one. All right. So this was a first watch for you, Sarah. What did you think of the last matinee? I honestly really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I thought I thought some of the kills, I thought the kills were great. I enjoyed the how they kind of synced up with the movie within the movie. The killer had an interesting <laughs> shtick going on. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> it was gorier than I thought it was going to be, which mm-hmm. was cool. My only con is I wish I was a little more familiar with giallo films. I'm not real familiar with them, mm-hmm. especially uh, opera, because it's it was that poster was featured quite a few times in s- different scenes. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I've actually never seen that one. I feel like we're going to need to do a giallo episode. I think mm-hmm. it needs yeah. to happen. One of our, I think so, too. Someone on the discord was saying they were going to give us a list of jello films to watch but we never got oh, that yeah list. we should ask for that mm-hmm. yeah we got to follow up and see if we can get that list because mm-hmm. i think we should do a giallo special i think so too i feel like we so many films recently have referenced yeah that mm-hmm. and and i watched a few of them when i was much much younger but i don't remember all of it that well mm-hmm. yeah so it would be interesting to kind of revisit and watch some ones i haven't seen too. yeah so. i feel well, out of my depth I, talking about those so yeah right right yeah well because like i remember there was one of the one of the tv stations we used to get out of the bay area that on sundays used to show horror films and they used to show either hammer films or giallo films uh-huh no, but it yep. was all but like I was like 12 when they stopped showing them on Sundays. So mm. like, I think it's the last time mm. I saw any of those. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was about that age too when I got into them and watched some. So yeah, it would be very cool to, to revisit that. Okay. We'll plan something. We'll do something. Awesome. Okay. How about you, Tilly? What did you think of the last matinee? Yeah, I liked this. And, you know, in this movie, sometimes in these types of movies where you have like the collection of people in a bottle, like in a capsule Mm -hmm. setting, um, you're supposed to understand that like a bunch of them are unlikable. And for the most part, they were pretty likable. Yeah. Um, Which Mm -hmm. I thought was a nice change. I liked, I mean, we're spoiling, right? I I, I really liked the eyeballs. I did too. I was like, damn it, Sarah got me with food horror again. (laughs) (laughs) I know. When When it opens and he's like eating the olives, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I instantly was like, oh, no. He pulls his own eyeball out of his mouth and then he's like stringing it out the tin. Like, I literally put my hand over my mouth. I was gagging. Uh, I was the just eyes with, like their roots still <laughs> yeah, attached no. to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I knew, I knew you were you were into it, but I was just like, oh. And one That's of the so things great. that really delighted me about that scene is that the three kids are kind of like shrinking away from him, and it, it just goes on and on. That scene, it sure did. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't just <laughs> focusing on dilating. The yeah, and Anna, our final <laughs> yeah. girl, like she looks like I imagine I would look in that, where she's just mad. She's like, cut it out. <laughs> like the other kids are horrified and she's like stop it <laughs> um, you're breaking the social contract yeah. yeah so um i liked it there there were some things that were um a little funny to me in that like for one there were two kills back to back with that little knife where like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i don't think they decided how much blood is in a body in this uh-huh. movie because sometimes uh, he would like uh-huh. kill somebody and there would be like a teaspoon of blood on the knife and the next time there would just be like you know uh like Gushing. tarantino <laughs> spray. yeah 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 but yeah, i liked yeah. it it did make me want to um go back and re- reread uh men women and chainsaws because of the amount of eye horror oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. I think I actually have your copy. Yeah. It made me want to like brush up on this to. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I liked it. Gotcha. Nice. So I think this is a very stripped down kind of movie, you know, in an age where we're very accustomed to a lot of theme, a lot of social commentary. This thing is definitely kind of the polar opposite of that. And I think for fans of slashers and lovers of Giallo who want who kind of like miss that a little bit and really want, you know, like they're like enough with the social commentary enough enough with that. I just want like a stripped down slasher. I want to see some really cool kills. I want to see blood. I want to just, I just want a pure slasher giallo style film. I think that this is going to be delightful for them. I think that they're mm-hmm. going to have a fantastic time. This is the movie that you're looking for. This is the one you've been mm-hmm. waiting for. Run, do not walk to, to shutter and put this in your eyeballs and see eyeballs do things that you don't want to see eyeballs do. Um, <laughs> And I, but I, on the other hand, I think I'm kind of surprised by your review, Matilda, because as I was watching it, I was thinking for people who don't like slashers, who maybe don't have a ton of attachment to Giallo, I, there isn't that much to hold on to here because it is such so purely those oh, yeah. things. Um, like there is not a ton of character development in this, as Sarah was kind of joking when we well, all, all, transitions. All... Yeah, well, yeah, that was one thing about, like, some of the reviews that I read. Well, first of all, you said no social commentary. According to Pace, this is a a, a analogy about how going to the theater during COVID is very risky. You're taking your life okay. in your own hands. <laughs> okay. That's um, a stretch. That's yeah. a stretch. I mean, yeah. I get it um, now that you're saying yeah. it. Like, you never know, like, yeah. what's lurking. This, like, silent killer could be in the room. I get that. I get it. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, it's like... Either either the reviews were like, this is a great throwback to Giallo. This is, you know, the, you know, the, the movie's good, you know, or it was, there's 20 minutes of movie and there's no character development. We don't know anything about these people. How are we supposed to care about them? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I got everything I need to know about these people. You know, that like I was that, that, that teenage hood getting drunk and, 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 you know, mm-hmm coming into the movie Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think you get a decent amount about anna and her dynamic with mm -hmm. her father the three kids and you know the fun back and forth the way you know cure she owes a a scumbag right now yeah but it's very broad strokes and it's not like a lot yeah like you maybe know who these people are but there's not a lot of like anna does not come out necessarily a changed person from the person we met at the beginning and i'm not saying that that is a bad thing i'm just saying it is the thing and if right. that I don't is, need to know oh, about Tomas's grandma's dog, okay? To care about a kid in a theater. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> and like I said... I just think this for, is a different kind of movie and to expect it to be otherwise yes. is yeah. That's, yeah. wrong. That's all. I'm not, I'm not, this is not a criticism or a problem. Yeah. I'm just... I'm <clears throat> guiding the audience. Like, which you are one or the other type of audience. And it, you're going to have... I think this is a divisive film that if you are one kind, you're going to enjoy it. If you're another kind, you're going to have less to hold mm-hmm. on to. That's mm-hmm. all I'm yeah. saying. Sure, sure. I think this movie is fine. I did not like it as much as porno. I don't did not dislike it. I think it's fine. I think it was a good watch. It's not something I would necessarily return to. Um, if somebody wanted, if somebody was asking for like a pure slasher, this would be an easy recommend because yeah. it's it's not a bad movie by any stretch. It's just not necessarily my kind of movie, but I can still yeah. appreciate it for what it is. And I think some of the like visual stuff is really cool. Like the call back to the gumballs falling down the stairs at the end with all the <laughs> eyeballs is really yeah. great. I think yeah. that first kill where he cuts the guy's throat and it's just, or the creepy. The s- yeah. That's yeah, a really great kill. Out. The double skewer, which is a great like callback oh, to Friday I the 13th that. is it's a so great good. kill. Um, I just think it's kind of like a slight movie. Like there's not yeah. a lot of depth to it, but yeah, but it doesn't mean it's a bad movie. I just you yeah, know. you're right. It, there's not a lot of depth to it. I think it's just a good time, mm-hmm. you know. And I don't like that's just what it is. That's what you can expect going into it. And I don't think it has to be anything more than that. But if you are turned off by that kind of thing, then yeah, this isn't going to work for you. Yeah, and right. you are not meant to be attached to anyone. I don't think. No, yeah. I was a little bummed when the girl. But Angela, uh, died. Yeah, yeah, that she was cool. I didn't like that. I was like, oh man. Yeah. I mean, I get that we need to have stakes and not everybody can survive, and it would be mm-hmm. kind of stereotypical if the two girls and the child lived. But at the same time, I was like, damn, she earned it though. Yeah. She earned yeah. it. She did. Yeah. 
You know, she was the smart one. She was the first one that like took him, like you know, drew first blood essentially with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, movie. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, when 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 she smacks him with the with the uh, uh, fire extinguisher and then runs off with it, I'm like, yes, don't drop the weapon. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> and that thing comes in handy a few times. Although, like uh-huh. when they got him down in the theater, I was like, finish the job. Right. Finish yeah. the job. Yeah. <laughs> and leave him there with the knife next to him. Yeah. I do think this movie does a good job of capitalizing of the fe- like on a fear that I have of being in a theater. Like it's not necessarily a masked man with a knife that I'm worried about so much as a shooter. But there is always that little part of me when I'm in a movie theater or I used to be in a movie theater where you're like, you are essentially in a room, a dark room full of strangers Mm -hmm. and you Mm -hmm. never really know who's behind you. And I think that this movie kind of plays with that in a way that I'm like, yep, that's, that is a very mineable fear that this Mm -hmm. movie does a good job with. All right. How about you, Ariel? What did you think? Yeah. I mean, I've already touched on some of the things that I liked about it, but I, I do think that for me, this one worked really well. So I, this is actually my second watch. I saw it originally late last year mm-hmm. when we were doing sort of our last ditch run up to the end of the year, trying to get a bunch of movies in. And I had watched My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To and Agnes back oh to back. My God. <laughs> and then I saw this. <laughs> You're like breath of fresh. Yeah, especially because I liked one of those movies. I disliked Agnes. And so watching this, it was just like, ah, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so um yeah, I just I just think this movie is fun. It's not more than it needs to be, but I feel like it is kind of a love letter to the genre. And like you were pointing out, a lot of the kills have references to other movies in it, which make mm. them really enjoyable. I also really liked having the movie on screen through most of the movie. And it made me want to watch that movie, especially when that one guy... Um, gets stabbed in the mouth with like the walking stick and it's just like pushed (laughs) through his mouth yeah Mm -hmm. that was Uh really great so it made me want to check that out and i liked the idea of sort of the setup of this movie where we have all of these sort of different characters set up in different places around the theater kind of doing their own thing that date made me terribly uncomfortable Mm. (laughs) like the early i kept waiting for her to be like that will be fifty dollars yeah and i was like give her her money she was weird yeah (laughs) also the second somebody blows cigarette smoke in my face i'm out Mm -hmm. that's it right you're gone Mm -hmm. i don't care if you want to give me a hand jibber later it's over (laughs) (laughs) yeah i also i love that part where he goes to clean off his pants oh god And somebody tells him he's got a stain because it's a blood it's blood on the back of his pants but he thinks they're talking about the front of his pants he's like it was just rain yeah it's just rain (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> did you did you notice the posters in the uh in the lobby uh which one robot cop all, no all well uh, there was robot cop there was uh yes. oh, yes. Dinosaur part yeah two yes and... yeah dinosaur <laughs> part two is great yeah i mean and and some of those lighter comedic moments with the teens was really great i like the part where you know the guy wants to go down and talk to the girl and he gets the girl and they're making out and <laughs> And then it keeps going on, and his friend is like, "They've been in the same position." You mean Uruguay like and Jonah minutes. Hill, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. And it's because they've been stabbed together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was kind of into their little love story. I was like, "Go on, kid. I know. I know. Yeah, That's the part right? where it was like light stakes, but also like sweet, instead of uh-huh, like yeah, mean uh-huh. in the way that slashers can be. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah." Yeah, that's true. And I, I just think this is sort of, you know, it, it came in handy after watching some dark movies. I think if you need something light and, you know, kind of just like a snack of a movie, this is a good one. Yeah. yeah good you one will not be attached to anyone. Um, no. I, well, no, there was not one be an character for you. that I was very attached to and I felt very represented by. And that's the man screaming, shut up! <laughs> 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 I guess that's, he got so angry. It was so funny. The old man in the beginning. Yeah. When the yeah. teens come in and he's like, shut up! I and like, I love how hate yes. he gets, even though we already know that he sat through this movie once yes. before. Yes! <laughs> like it's not it for the, the point. second time and he's just like, shut the fuck up! This yeah, isn't your living so room, sir. Like, shut no, up! Yeah, no, I appreciate <laughs> that his feel. superpower was, like, how curmudgeonly he was so that the employees like, <laughs> yes, can't even right. deal with him. All of his, like, rolling eyes. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes! <laughs> it's me! <laughs> <So good. laughs> 
so good. Yeah, no, uh, uh, Oatmeal had Oatmeal had stopped by, and I was like, "Hey, we're gonna watch this movie." She was like, "Okay, cool." I said, "I got one thing though," and and uh, for you and Cat, when I when I watch this movie, she goes, "Okay, what is it?" I said, "Both of you need to shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> so you were also the old man at the beginning. Now I see I why Oatmeal posted that in the Discord. I was, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, this is a personal experience." You <laughs> 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 oh awesome awesome i think overall together this was a really good double feature i think you did yeah. a really good job, job programming this one yeah Sarah. i mean they're both set almost at the exact same time both set in movie theaters both have movies within a movie both have teen characters in it yeah mm-hmm. i mean there's so much crossover and the fact i assumed you had watched both of them to get yeah. that so right I'm great practical no, it, effects it, uh-huh if i had seen this before the year end review this yeah. wouldn't have made my top 10 but it would have been a recommend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Might have yeah. might have slid into an honorable mention spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I can see mm-hmm. that. All right. Overall recommendations. Yeah. I say watch. Yeah. Both I of recommend them. it. Yeah. I think, Rachel, what you were saying about it being like very much it's like its own thing. Right. Like mm-hmm. very stripped down. Like you have to really be in the mood for this. But yes. In that case. Yes. Yep. Yep. I would with the caveat of like what kind of movie do you want to watch? I would recommend. So those are our reviews of Porno and Last Matinee, but we'd love to hear what you think. Do you you love these movies? Are we off? Are we on? Is there a third movie that we need to watch having seen these? Whatever you want to say. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at rachel at zombiegirls.com. That's G-R-R-L-Z dot com. Or you can come chat with us over on the Zombie Girls Facebook page or on Twitter and Instagram at ZG Podcasts, plural. Uh, if you're a patron, you can talk with us on the Discord, and uh, that's one of the best perks you can get if you want to support us that way. We have really fun. We have a bonus episode dropping this week on Maximum Overdrive. We have a really, really fun uh, live show that I talked about at the top of the show planned for later this month that you're definitely going to want to see, as well as lots of other really cool perks. So check that out. If you are enjoying the show, you can please do consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your pods. If you listen to us on Spotify, you can give us that nice five-star rating, make us feel real good inside. If you're looking for something spooky to watch tonight, be sure to stop by the Zombie Girls website and check out our video on demand and streaming calendar where we keep track of all the spooky doings that are happening on streaming and video on demand. Women in Horror Month, so there's like tons of really incredible films directed by women or co-directed by women coming out this month. So definitely you're going to want to come check that information out. And yeah, if you want to get, you want to support us, uh, one other great way is to buy some of our sweet, 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 sweet merch at zombiegirls.com forward slash merch. We've got some cool t-shirts. We've got some new designs coming. All kinds of good stuff happening there. All right, so that is it. I forgot to do the streaming picks. <laughs> so I'm going to recommend something that we reviewed on More Deadly because, like I said, it yes. is it is uh, Women in Horror Month. So on Shutter, you should fire up the old Shutter, and then you should start Googling, or not Googling, searching. Searching is the word I was looking for. I was searching for. <laughs> A little film called Hellbender, which is directed by the Adams family, including Toby Poser and Zelda Adams, along with John Adams. It is a fantastic, witchy, feminist, coming-of-age tale. Um, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's one of the best things I've seen all year. It's by the directors of The Deeper You Dig, and it is about a young girl who has been living in isolation uh, with her mother on the mountain until she comes across another young woman and an Bent occurs that awakens something inside of her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty freaking great, y'all. It It's really good. It's super creative. The This family of filmmakers, every time I watch something of them, they show me something I've never seen before. And this movie does not disappoint on that front. So, yeah, I would definitely say, say check this one out. And then one, if you are not a more deadly listener, after you check it out, check out our review. And check out our interview with the family, who are amazing. They are fascinating. Yes. Super, super cool. All right. Uh, Unless you're sticking around for the extended episode, where we are going to be continuing our What the Fuck Are We Reading book club uh, with a discussion of the novella? Question mark. Go ask Alice. 
But if not, <laughs> we're done. So who would like to take us out? <laughs> sure. All right, Ariel, take us out. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Zombie Girls podcast. We had so much fun talking about Sarah's picks. Occasionally, she surprises us with something super weird and disturbing, but this time it was just pure fun. So we hope you like that. And stick with us for Go Ask Alice if you're a patron. Otherwise, we'll catch you next month. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Thanks, everybody, for listening and to all my co-hosts for waking up early every month just to talk about horror movies with me. Production on this episode was done by yours truly. Our theme song for the show is 80s Halloween Horror by Megan McDuffie. <laughs> okay, here we go. Found my next pick. Oh no. oh no! Oh god! <laughs> from director Mark Polonia from Amityville in Space, Shark Encounters of the Third Kind, Jurassic Shark Two, Aqua Apocalypse, and Wide Eye Releasing comes a micro budget aquatic fe- creature feature, Sharkula. I sent you that. This year. Did you, I tagged you in that. Did you see that? Uh no. I, I, Wait, is oh, it Dracula? You tagged me in Amityville in yeah, Space. Oh good, thank God. Sorry about that. <laughs> The curse of no, Count Dracula don't. lives on in shark-infested waters. Oh my God! Sarah, the we have lives to watch that. of no, we don't. Tourist <laughs> Ariel, <laughs> shut a your sea whore mouth. For the new, <laughs> the, the new species results in monsters, madness, and bloodshed. This great white is putting the bite back into terror. I'm it looking has... forward to your guys' spinoff. You guys can watch all of these movies. <laughs> and it has help with the aid of new vampires intent on seeing it survive. <laughs> I think, yeah, Trash Panda Theater, you two, spin off. Yes. <laughs> Have at it. I support you. Just trash I will make you. I will make movies. you podcast art. I will do whatever <laughs> I can to support if you do I, not. I'm down for it, Ariel, if you that are. That would be really fun. You guys should do it. Seriously. <laughs> do it. I su- do it. You guys, oh, let, me know. Yeah. let me know. Let me know. We can do We can do the double feature of Amityville in space and Amityville in the hood. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Trash Panda Theater. I love it. I think it's meant to be. That's why that's why the Trash Pandas chased you today, Ariel. It was to inspire this podcast. They're doing right, I'm the writing that work. down. Yes, write it oh down. It seems like a perfect place to watch all those movies. <laughs> I feel like there's an ulterior motive here. No, it's just nothing but supportive motive. <laughs> all righty hello everyone and welcome to the extended episode where we are going to learn a very cautionary tale of drugs sex rock and roll question mark I guess there's not a lot of rock and roll in this so sarah you selected this for our book club what are we going to be reading or what did we read and why did we read it <laughs> okay so uh we read go ask alice by anonymous um and you know it i i don't know about you guys but i know like it was one of these books that like in 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 junior high it was like oh man you know there's this diary of this girl who's a drug addict and you know oh the all the bad things that happened to her and you know you know this is why you should stay away from drugs everybody needs to read this <laughs> you know uh-huh yeah so and you know in the eight days before google you couldn't just you know pull up the wiki on it and be like oh it was written by yeah <laughs> a mormon so is that lady. a lie okay oh it was written by a mormon yes. lady but yep beatrice sparks is a uh, mormon psychologist yep. okay god it was basically just anti-drug propaganda yeah it yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. like honestly like the best thing about this book was the uh the, be- the beginning and the ending paragraphs uh, uh, as far as the, uh, My God, the little the warnings. Ending. <laughs> the, warners, the, the, the warnings from the editor. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Go Ask Alice is based on the actual diary of a 15-year-old drug user. It is not a definitive statement of the middle-class teenage drug world. <laughs> it does not offer any solutions. It is, however, highly personal and specific chronicle. As such, we hope it will provide insight into the increasingly complicated world in which we live names dates places and certain events have been changed in accordance with the wishes of those concerned i are just like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> middle class read white suburban uh-huh. teens yeah <laughs> i have to say 
I actually had never heard of this oh. before, so I had oh, really? no idea what I was getting myself <gasps> oh. into. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know where it was going. I, I mean, I at some point was like, okay, I think I know where this is going. And then I was like, oh, no, okay, it didn't go where I thought it went. Oh, no, it did. It definitely didn't go where I thought it went. <laughs> 